just uh, by way of further introduction, uh, I'm here as part of a team with Colin. Uh, we run together the Data Driven Innovation Program in Health and Social Care. Uh, a key aspect of that is the building of a new Usher Institute uh, on the Biocorter campus. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Institute itself, but also our program of activity over the next 10 years. Now, um, you've heard a bit about the City Region deal already. It's 1.3 billion pounds of investment in the region. Uh, almost half of that is going to deliver a data-driven innovation program. It brings together um, UK and Scottish government priorities with our local authorities and all the higher education uh, authorities. And Edinburgh University is, is very much taking a lead role in the delivery of this program. Um, we, we want to draw inward investment to the region, uh, stimulate entrepreneurship, and ultimately uh, facilitate uh, economic growth uh, across the region. Uh, the program, the wider program, has the ambitious uh, challenge of becoming uh, the data capital of Europe uh, over the next 10 years uh, in, in doing this. Um, my focus is on health and social care, but uh, and although the New Usher Institute is going to sit at the heart of the Biocorp campus, we very much are a network of innovation hubs, bringing together data science through the Bayes Institute, Agritech through uh, Easter Bush, uh, the wider impact uh, of data-driven innovation on society uh, and the finance sector through the Edinburgh Futures Institute. And we're ultimately underpinned by a 100 million pound investment in a new facility called the Edinburgh International Data Facility run by uh, the EPCC, Edinburgh Parallel Computing Centre in Edinburgh, who currently hosts the UK supercomputer infrastructure. Uh, and this facility is going to be really fundamental in terms of uh, delivering our, our programs. Our goals are to generate new talent, skill uh, people in the region in order to uh, thrive in this digital economy, uh, generate new knowledge uh, and drive forward innovation. In, in my particular sector, we have a number of pretty substantial challenges of which COVID-19 has uh, added to our uh, situation. Um, you know, in this region alone, we're estimating that by the end of our program, our population will have increased from 1.2 to 1.5 million. Uh, staggeringly, uh, that is going to include a doubling of those over the age of 75, who of course are the major users of most of our health and social care services. That uh, is a success to, uh, story for modern medicine, but brings with it some significant challenges to the way we deliver care, particularly in the community where 70% uh, of our spend on health and social care takes place. Um, how does data solve these problems? Well, it starts by ensuring better communication between primary, secondary and social care in order to tackle age-old problems like delayed discharge. But we have to do it in an environment where we're increasingly under pressure to reduce spend. Uh, every year there's a, a roughly 20% increase in the cost of the treatments that we have available. We have to somehow ensure that we're delivering good value for the health service and our partners. Why Scotland and why this region uh, for, for data-driven innovation? Well, we have a single healthcare provider, essentially, in Scotland, which, which allows us to bring together a population of 5.4 million uh, with cradle to grave data linked through a unique number, the Community Health Index. Uh, and we've been working on this uh, for 30 years in order to drive insights into health and care outcomes. We also have substantial backing by the Scottish Government through policy commitments to facilitate integration between social and health uh, care. Uh, principally by sharing data, knowledge and resources. I would also say, having worked in this region for, for, for 20 years, that we have really fabulous partnerships between our healthcare providers, uh, the, the academic institutions here, industry and super support from the, the public for these initiatives. Um, so I've had the pleasure of uh, living and working in this uh, in the bio quarter for since it opened, really, uh, since we first moved patients across uh, from the Old Royal Infirmary. I've worked in the hospital, uh, I've worked in the Queen's Medical Research Institute, the Scottish Centre for Regenerative Medicine, uh, and the medical school. But I think the New Usher Institute is going to be uh, a pretty unique place. Uh, our goals are to bring together the, the wider um, public sector, private sector, and third sectors to stimulate uh, data-enabled improvements in, in the care health and care of people in our region and beyond. The, the building itself uh, is only one aspect of this. We have a, a, a substantial program over the next 10 years in order to deliver these improvements in care outcomes. 
Uh, and it, critically, it's an outward looking program. We're looking to deliver this not just for the University of Edinburgh, but for our partner organizations, of which uh, I hope that many of you will uh, become. Um, so just a little bit about our strategic asset. Um, uh, this is uh, our impression of the building. It's due to open in 2023. It will house around a thousand individuals, uh, not just academics from the university, uh, but health and social care providers, uh, and those that want to engage and develop new businesses uh, in this sector. Um, this is a, a picture of it from the uh, hospital side, looking back up the hill to the bio quarter. Uh, and this is a, an image I think you've seen earlier in Anna's presentation that shows the position of the New York Institute really at the heart of this campus, bridging the established infrastructure uh, with the, uh, the new vision for the site. Um, the ground floor of this building is really important to us, and we've spent a lot of time thinking about how to develop it, because uh, it's really important that it is there for the community of people that are, are living and working in this area. It is not going to be a closed swipe access university building. It's going to create, it's going to have a, an innovation hub with a fabulous data observatory, an outreach facility, a, a public presentation area within uh, a public cafe in order to make sure that the, the, our partners in the region and our, our academics doing fabulous research and innovation projects have the opportunity to share what they're doing with people working in the area. Um, as you move up the building, the plan is to, to house a series of neighborhoods. So we'll have 10 different neighborhoods. That'll bring together the Center for Medical Informatics, uh, who's a very interested in applied AI in healthcare. It'll bring together a, a new center, the Advanced Care Research uh, Center, funded recently by Legal in General, uh, to the tune of 20 million pounds to help uh, us understand how to develop new pr approaches for healthy, healthy aging. We also have some really important uh, Health Data Research UK innovation hubs like Breed, as well as established uh, groups that are going to relocate to the campus, including the Edinburgh Clinical Trials Unit, uh, the Centre for Population and Global Health. So we are uh, going to be a very uh, mixed group, um, and uh, we hope that uh, uh, our partners will help us deliver on our uh, key objectives over the next 10 years, in part through this infrastructure. But our aims are much broader. Uh, we want to develop uh, and train uh, students and existing health and social care professionals so that they can engage in data-enabled uh, data uh, improvements in, in health and social care. Um, we have a target of 9,000 students. We also aim to bring in significant additional investment over and above the 100 million pounds that we have secured for this program uh, in order to drive forward particularly applied and interdisciplinary research that will impact uh, on patients, not just in our region, uh, but much more broadly by demonstrating the value of data-driven uh, innovation to, uh, to our global uh, healthcare community. Um, we also want to engage with industry, um, not just through bringing in investment to the region, uh, but with uh, helping to support uh, up to 250 different companies, uh, both uh, private and third sector companies, uh, in order to promote the acceleration of uh, artificial intelligence and other innovative solutions to healthcare. Um, data underpins everything we do. Uh, and actually, the first program that we set up is a five million pound investment in something called Data Law. Uh, this is quite an important strategic program for our, our, uh, our innovation hub that will allow us to access linked data from primary, secondary, and social care providers across the region for everyone living in our region. And, uh, and lastly, we want to use this infrastructure, um, the support uh, that we put in through the DDI program to drive forward uh, new business uh, and to support small startup companies in, in the region. We can't do this as a university alone, of course, so this is a really important uh, outward-looking program uh, where we are fostering, I think, a number of key partnerships already. Um, first and foremost, we, we signed a strategic plan with the chief executive of NHS Lillian at the beginning of February last year on how the data-driven innovation program is going to work with all the health boards across the region. In developing a data repository and um, uh, services that uh, facilitate the use of this data, uh, we want to help them to de develop a data-driven approach to the prevention uh, and treatment 
uh, of all health conditions in the region and ultimately to develop uh, a learning healthcare system that can be a template for, for other regions and other countries. Um, I, I was going to tell you a little bit about some of the uh, challenges, uh, that some of the uh, programs that we have set up in response to these challenges. Uh, many of them have been um, dwarfed a little by our uh, response to COVID-19, where we've been providing real-time data to healthcare providers, to academics, to businesses interested in developing new diagnostic tests for COVID-19. But we retain a very strong ambition to tackle these big challenges uh, over the longer uh, term in this program. Uh, and I'd be delighted to take any uh, specific questions about the program or general questions uh, later on in the session. Thanks for your attention.